Do you so. want to start or should I start? Oh, what do you want to do? <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to do? Welcome today to a topic that's as important as any other, and that is on nurturing. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I should say, hang on. We're going to be discussing the importance of nurturing certain things that we do to avoid nurturing and uh, give ideas and experiences. So I hope you enjoy. I was just thinking, I think a lot of people think nurturing could be just things that to relax up. I think the, the mistake relaxation to nurturing, I think a lot of people would consider, you know, after coming home from work and sitting down on the couch and whatever, and the, that self nurturing, but I don't look at it that way. I agree. I don't either. I think um, I feel like you almost need to take time dedicated for nurturing, where because we're rushing around all the time with work and deadlines and family and everything, we just take it's like oh, I'll have a five minute break or watch TV for half an hour, and, and yeah, I feel. People get lost in distractions as opposed to nurturing. Mm-hmm. And I feel nurturing is, is super important. Distracting is, you know, it, it's okay and there's nothing wrong with distracting or doing something you enjoy, but they are worlds apart, I feel. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, what would you suggest people do to nurture themselves? Well, I, th- I feel slow down. I, I feel it's about becoming aware ideally of how much, I think the first thing is realize how much we tend to avoid nurturing. Mm-hmm. And what are the signs? The signs are when you get home, so you might be a hundred mile an hour at work and then you get home and you're, you're still on the same mode. And I feel it's important to realize how much you're rushing even at home, because that's a sign of distracting. In my experience, when you're racing around, you're avoiding something within. And it's, di- it's different if you're, if you have headlines, it's different if you have deadlines at work uh, because there's ramifications if you don't make them. But when you get home, there's no real deadlines. But yet we go in the same mode. We race around and you know, we, we race to one, from one thing to the next to do dinner, to do everything else, then just distract purely. My son, when he was 12, was, I noticed how much he was racing around. And he, he, I told him that I felt that it, it seemed like he was suffering or not coping very well. And you basically admitted that that was true. So for the very first thing I told him to do was to slow down. I said, yeah, yeah, 100 mile an hour, you're walking, everything's fast paced. Mm-hmm. And it, it was almost, it was hard for him to do because it's almost like he had to slow down that much that. It's almost like he was losing his balance. He wasn't, but it appeared that way. It wasn't natural. And so slowly, slowly, like Mr. Miyagi, in a sense, just trying to get him to slow down and, and uh, we'd talk about things if it came up. But that was the first thing. The very first thing is slow down. And once you do that, there's you have to be prepared for what comes next, and that tends to be uh, guilt and other feelings of uh, not being enough or or you should be doing something else another distraction. So there's layers upon layers. So mm-hmm. to nurture yourself initially, I don't feel as easy. Like it can be from time to time. If you've had a, a big week or you've you've been really busy at home, on some level you'll think, yeah, okay, I've deserved to, you know, go and have a bath with incense or something and nice soft music or whatever whatever you want to do. Just take time out and feel. And I, I feel I love listening to angelic music. I feel music is um bring about certain harmony that make you feel nice. So, and there's music for all sorts of things. If you're training in a gym or if you're doing certain things, you'll listen to music, obviously, that gets you pumped. But I feel it's important to lis- listen to music that is nurturing. And there's also a trap here. I don't mean to overwhelm people <laughs> potentially, mm-hmm. but even listening to soft, angelic or nice music can bring up anger and frustration. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. So it's there's judgment. I really feel that it's all about life is about getting in touch with heart and the way to do that, the, the fastest way, the the most direct way is through nurturing. You know, meditation and is a type of nurturing and yoga is a type of nurturing. It's it's um aligning yourself to get in touch with how you feel and um there's many ways, but slowing down is key. 
So, so would you say that it's a mind, body, spirit thing, or is it simply a, a physical thing, and then that will roll into our spiritual thing, or is it separate, or is it all inclusive? I feel it's all inclusive. Like there is nothing but spiritual, ultimately. Yeah. So you can do you can do physical ways like yoga. You can do you know transcendental meditation or different types of meditations. But I feel the the, the biggest wall. The biggest obstacle for us to not nurture ourselves is our emotional body. So, and then because that triggers the mental body, the mental, the mind, the emotional aspect has to be looked into. Without that, um, you know, you, you can obviously meditation and yoga and that sort of thing will subtly break through these aspects or the emotional aspect, but you still have to deal with it in time. It's amazing how with meditating, you, know, you you might do it for a week or a few months, and you don't necessarily realise. You don't always become aware of the change that takes place within. Not until a circumstance or something happens at work or somewhere where, in reflecting, you'll realise that the way you handled the whole thing was different. And you go, oh, it's working. Yeah. So it sort of sneaks up on you in a way. Mm-hmm. So it does work, obviously. And meditating allows you to be in the moment more so, where when we're in the past or the future, the more we are in either of those, the more we suffer. The emotional triggers or trauma, and that's even associated with smells and all sorts of things, external things or uh, things that activate your senses. It can bring about uh, emotional responses and triggers and all sorts of things. So mm-hmm. I just really feel, and, and another thing, depending on whether you're, you know, you're a man or a woman, and depends on how much you're in touch with the feminine aspect or the masculine aspect because like I'm, I'm in a male body, but I feel I'm feminine and masculine. And as you get more and more in touch with yourself, you become, it balances more and more in my experience. Mm-hmm. So men tend to go into the mind and they'll do mental things. You know, it's like, it's an issue they'll rationalize and you know they'll work it out in their head where women tend to, some that's more in touch with their emotions tend to feel more into a different approach. It's a, bit of, it's a softer approach. And I feel when you know, the world does need more feminine uh, energy, more softness, more nurturing. And I just found, found in my experience that I do, I've learned ceremonies, learned different techniques to try and unravel the mind. That seemed to work to some degree. I still went through a lot of suffering. But what I found, this is very interesting. Is that for me to really dig deep into myself, I had to do feminine things like listen to soft music and this is what worked for me. So I did something opposite to what I was to what was familiar to me. Mm-hmm. And so certain ceremonies uh, they tend to be feminine, the ones that I did, and get in touch with heart and connecting. And not that you can't do that in the, in the mas- masculine, but certain techniques, you know, uh, the ones that I learned were more feminine based. What I found, a lot of ceremonies are feminine. You surrender. You're 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 becoming more humble, and you're letting go. And uh, surrendering is real softening. And what I found, I was doing certain aspects, certain things that I'd learned in India. I was listening to very soft, very angelic music, beautiful music, and I still listen to that today. And my, for a period of six months, my heart started aching more and more. And most people would, you know, you'd think, oh, if you're going to, if your heart's aching, stop doing it, you know. And, and the tendency is when we're, if we're not, um, if there's any sort of ache, try and get rid of it. But the ache that I was experiencing was that like a longing, like a longing to go home and not to take my life or anything like that. It's longing for understanding for truth within longing for connection and I found listening like doing the feminine things nurturing deep nurturing um and the other practices and mantras and things that I was doing was all in softness it just made my heart ache more and more and more Mm -hmm. and I became addicted it's a healthy addiction I can become addicted to to connecting what I'm and the longing grew and the ache expanded in a sense but it was it was love it was unconditional love and that's what drew me in, and I, I I could not get enough. 
that that went on for about six months until I discovered something within myself, like a, a deeper love that I've never experienced. So I feel the things that we subtly avoid are often the things we need. And if it's if it's anything around nurturing or taking time, uh, that's and this resistance, that's a sign that we need to explore that area in my in my view. The trap and this is society, is you, know, you have to earn you have to earn something. You've got to earn it. You've got to do enough in the backyard, do enough in the kitchen, do enough around the home. You have to I've touched on this in other chats that we've had. But you, you earn it by knowing that you deserve something more than in itself and how you sit in yourself. And even if you're confused, you owe yourself to unravel that confusion at least. And you don't have to mentally unravel it. That can help understanding will set you free. But the understanding is is merging and realizing the emotional impact as well as the mental impact and everything else around whatever you're feeling. Would you say following your passion would be self-nurturing? Or is it something just separate? They can be the same because it, they're not – they can be one and the same, but they don't, aren't necessarily because we're driven to, you know, uh, to get the job and to do certain things externally as well. And I feel it, there's a sense of satisfaction, which is nurturing, of course, but um, – yeah, they can be the same, but not necessarily the same at all. But yeah. I feel it's important to uh, to find a way to enjoy nurturing, like let it, that become one of one of your passions. But mm-hmm. so that's very, very important because you have to face that guilt and fear that tells you you're not good enough or it's not worth it or that you should be doing something else. The more you get in touch with yourself, and the more you nurture yourself through, and as I mentioned, the, the key thing initially is slowing down. And I'd, I'd told people, even in the kitchen or doing whatever you're doing, even things around the home, put nice music on it and slow down and just enjoy it. Like it's like a dance almost. Mm. And so be tender with yourself. Yeah. And then you're valuing the way you are and who you are and you're getting in touch with who you are instead of judging yourself based on the idea of who you are or an idea of who others think you are. Discover the real you. You will not be disappointed. I don't believe you could be. Ultimately, when you go deep enough, you'll find something profound. Mm. And if you're not feeling, if anyone's not feeling good enough within, why wouldn't you take that journey inward? Because it, it's the the distract the outward distractions are nothing more than than a distraction, and they will, in my experience, enhance the feeling of not being enough. There's only one way you can get turn, and that's inward. To start yep. uh, feeling more and feeling greater within, feeling uh, more valued. But you have to start with value. Sorry, you have to start with valuing yourself. That is key. What would you say were some telltale signs of someone not nurturing themselves? The most obvious one is they're going at 100 mile an hour. They don't slow down even at home. Mm-hmm. So the faster you are, the you're going, the the more you're avoiding, in my beliefs. It's like it's been said that as you approach the speed of sound, your vision narrows. You know, like a the peripheral vision sort of comes in, and the faster you go, the the more you transfixed on the on the, in the direction forward. I feel that's that's symbolic of how you are when you're racing. Not that we're going around the speed of sound, but obviously. But the faster you go, the the more uh, fixated we are on where we're heading. Yep. And and then we're looking for something specific ahead of us where my attitude and anyone that knows me knows I'm very casual. I'm serious, but casual. But I go, yeah, I'll just walk forward seeing what I'll see rather than having too much of a focus on any one thing in particular. Mm-hmm. So where an example with intuition, I feel, when people are fearing or they're, they're not trusting themselves, they'll they'll try and use the intuition or they'll try and um, seriously ponder the next step or they'll try and get guidance on the next step and they'll look for, the, look for exactly what they've been told or look for what they want, what they project in front of them. And I feel they use the intuition for – well, they don't necessarily trust the intuition if they're fearing anyway, but it's like they, they won't put a foot forward unless they feel – 
completely safe, and I understand that. Yeah. But when you surrender and let go, my experience, tuning in with your intuition is more about reassessing or realigning your true north. So you know the direction, you trust the direction you're heading in. So then you, you walk in that direction open to possibilities in front of you rather yeah. than having a preconceived idea on what, you're, what you must meet. And yeah. if you can't recognize that before you put your foot down, you won't even take a step forward. That's a trap, fear. So obviously fear and racing are signs that uh, you need to get in touch with how you're feeling. I remember you telling me that, sorry. I remember you telling me that when um, I had my eldest when she was quite young and I've always been a happy-go-lucky person. I, I don't usually have any major issues, but I could feel myself getting into a rut. And uh, I think um, it was mentioned to you um, what, what was going on with me because I could not work it out. And all you, had, all you said was something simple like, um, need to spend some time on yourself or self-nurture and it just dawned on me being a busy mum a new mum you focus so much on the kid that you forget about yourself and I didn't even realize and the second he said it I knew I knew exactly that I was not spending any time on myself at all it was all focused on the family and that's so easy to fall to fall into absolutely well it, it's it sneaks up on you then you're distracted by everything around you and because you focus on everything but you, you become attached to an outcome around you. Yeah. So then it turns into, without awareness, it can turn it into control of what's going on around you. And there's less harmony where if you take a step back and allow people, well, and not only allow others around you, but show them to take time and to get in touch with how they feel, you'll have a far more harmonious household, wouldn't you, as, as you've experienced? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, completely started to feel run down and not happy and and I could not work out why. It was so simple. It is. This stuff, these things we speak about is extremely simple, really. It is. Yeah. It's, it's, it, it seems complicated, but it's actually not. It, it's, it's to, In my mind, it's, it's absolute common sense. It's yeah. deep. It's, it's, it's not rocket science. It's just that mm. it's all about awareness, yeah. 100% awareness and then this can be unraveled pretty easily in my experience. So, and I, when you speak to people often, they go, ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's it. It was so simple and I should have known it myself, but I think I was so focused on everything that was, you know, this had to be done, that had to be done, this had to be done, completely lost sight of it. And I, I didn't even realize, and it was so simple. It just dawned on me, ah, oh, the second you said yeah. it. But this is the, the thing, like, like the, the biggest challenges within family. So with families, you're easily drawn out of yourself. Like we are, that, that's how it is. So yeah. if you, they, they say the last place you break through is, is where it comes to family. Mm -hmm. So if you can apply the same understanding within yourself, you know, and it's easier with friends and it, it's far easier with strangers to actually apply certain conditions because you're not so attached to them. Yeah. That's the circle around you get smaller and your, your friends sort of, are, you know, are closer. That's where the true challenge begins. Mm -hmm. It's about becoming aware of what benefits you and what doesn't and setting up happy or healthy ways, healthy processes around you and your family. Yep. And everyone must be willing, of course. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's not always easy, but it has to start with yourself, not others for sure. Yeah. Uh, I think I think the greatest way you can impact anyone is by embracing these things yourself. And yeah. if you nurture yourself and no one else in your family does, they might think, who are you to nurture yourself, you know? Mm. It might feel, and it can bring up his stuff in others. But you, you say, well, you should do it as well. Exactly. You know, it's not one in all in, so to speak. If it's good enough for you, it's good enough for them. And I feel um, – yeah, understanding is the only thing, and, and to get in touch with understanding and feeling, you have to get in touch with yourself. That is the way forward. Otherwise, the rest are just distractions and uh, conforming, and it's a very volatile way to live, in my experience, and for what I've seen and how things are today. You know, yeah. nurturing is more important than ever, and I, I don't feel it's about squashing the masculine. It's about focusing more on 
the feminine. But that's not to disregard the, the masculines as important. But I feel at the moment, um, you know, you don't squash one thing to to, to enhance another. No. Because they're two sides to a coin. They're both necessary, of course. It's all so balance. Hundred percent. I feel yeah. uh, the world's out of balance, and nurturing the feminine aspect is key. That's the most important thing I feel at the moment. But like my, myself, I'm pretty soft. I, I feel like not to say I can't rule like a lion, but the first thing with myself is and is softness and having a, a joke and. And trying to take pressure off, that's feminine aspect. And that's mm-hmm. what I'd like to start with that as much as possible, you know, with all my yeah. friends. So I say to a lot of my friends, it's okay. It's all right. If they're stressing about things, it'll work out. Mm-hmm. And then we'll discuss and, you know, but it's all through softness rather than, no, nah, this will happen, that'll happen. Like I don't try and fix their problems. Nurturing to open themselves up to possibilities. Nurturing is always the, at the forefront of what I try and offer. You can't force it, can you? It has to flow naturally. Hundred percent. Nothing, nothing can be forced because it that encourages others to to shut down. Exactly. It who you are, you know, it's it's the greatest teacher on earth. If you force anything, uh, then if they don't, if people don't have the opportunity to choose, then they won't be open to that possibility anyway. We'll just no one wants to be dictated toward. That's for sure. Yeah. I certainly don't. Not why. <laughs> <laughs> well, that what are you waiting for? <laughs> for anything. <laughs> said, Don't do you? Do you? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, no, it's dying. Yep, cool. I feel that the trap we fall into is when we're trying to assist others, we we're just looking at why they're not healing or not um improving or their life's not changing like we'd like it to. So if someone's in our family is stressing, we got so preoccupied in their stress, we're stressing while they are mm-hmm. because we take on the burden. There's a small proportion of people that you can tell them how to do things and they'll make changes. And if they're willing to grow and learn their own spiritual path or you might tell them something that gels and something full away, they'll go, oh, yeah, of course. But apart from that, the only way we can truly change others is to show them the change within ourselves. Mm-hmm. Like, I remember when I was younger and my, my family, they'd tell me things and I'd go, oh, you're not doing that. <laughs> so mm-hmm. yeah. I was pretty young. So although I knew it was probably the right thing to do what they're telling me, I thought they're not actually uh, doing what they're offering at all. Yep. So we, we don't teach. It's not like the school or the, the classroom where you sit there and you're teaching them certain things. If we don't embody what we're teaching, then there's no real lesson. It's just mm. theory. And I feel this is the potential trap with a lot of people. They teach theory and they don't, they're not applying that medicine to their own lives. Mm. Now, I'm not saying no one is, but I'm saying that there are teachers out there that don't apply their words. And some people may think I don't, but mm-hmm. you know, it's amazing. There's a number of experts that know how you and I are, but we've never spoken to them in our life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there's people that will refuse anyway, but you've got to listen to the words. You have to um, – the, the people where you can impact are the ones that are open to us and what we say. And yeah. if that resonates and they feel it's real, that will encourage them to change. If they don't feel it's real, then they won't change. They won't take on board as much. Yeah. You have to really – best as you can try and embody the teachings that you offer mm-hmm. and I feel nur- self-nurturing is the way to uh, take that offering and that teaching for insight or understanding that we all have to some degree mm-hmm. uh, that's how that deepens and that, that impact becomes more potent as you become more true to yourself mm-hmm. and you can't prove that to anyone they either resonate with that or they don't and a person that's absolutely confused could, could meet a potential saint and think that person's full of it because yeah. they're too messed up inside to see the beauty within that, that other being. People need to remember too that it's a process. It's, it's quite a process and a long process. So 
not to beat themselves up if things don't fall into place right away. It is a process of being aware and, and taking the next step and being aware and, and so forth. So I think people have to forgive themselves for not getting it straight away and, and be patient with themselves too. 100%. I feel the goal is to ultimately try and build momentum. And where it comes to looking into, into yourself or oneself, uh, there's almost always resistance to building momentum where it comes to liberating the self, I feel. Yep. So, but if that is your goal, build momentum, you have to just stick to it like anything. It, it's Things feel – look at the, the, the greatest athletes in the world. They are effortless. The, the way they're the ice skaters, the way they flow, the way they do what they do, just seems absolutely natural. It is amazing. You know, can you imagine the struggles it took them and the falls they had to take to become that fluent in what they do? Exactly. So, and it's the same process. It's, it's, it doesn't feel natural at first. Well, actually, it, it should on some level. Like it's, it, it'll bring stuff up, but it's the resistance within the self that we've spoken about before. Yeah. But we have to be very uh, – our passion must be, our goal must be to just build momentum. And then slowly, slowly, it will it will increase. And you you have experience for yourself, yeah. and yeah. what I've seen them I mean, the last year, eighteen months or two years or so, is huge. Yeah, it's like that's been the most. Wouldn't you say that's been the, the most passion, the fastest you've grown, and and or. Oh yeah. Like, how would you how would you express the last two years uh, compared to prior with the momentum and what you're doing and the, your passion now? Well, it starts off quite. Quite, it is hard work initially because I think I never used to meditate at all. I, I used to, and I think because my mind was so active, I've always been a thinker and I always like to to poke and prod things and, and look at things, all sorts of uh, perspectives. But And then to, to try to shut that off, there is a resistance in, in the mind trying to, to fight that. And, and to me, it was boring, like to just sit there on the spot and, you know, it's boring. So you have to start a little bit and then, but then once you do get into a more or, or in the momentum, like you were saying, it's, it's easier and it becomes fun and it's, it's more enjoyable because you're getting more out of it and, and you fall in deeper and deeper and it's, it, yeah, it, it's, it gets more I, fun and, I feel and that, it goes faster. Yeah. I feel there's a, um, Potential misunderstanding for others. I know what you're saying, but um, the difference, in a sense, and correct me if I'm wrong, is when you were going through that, like transitioning, in a sense, you weren't necessarily shutting off your mind. You were focused on something else. Mm. So, so the what I offered when we talk would be to surrender more, get in touch with the, the feminine aspect or the feelings, trust yourself more rather than the mind, because the mind always says it has all the answers. Mm-hmm. It's like let let go of what the mind thinks it knows and yep. feel. And that's when walls beca- began coming down. So mm-hmm. I, I just – yeah, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's more of a – you didn't actually become successful in in stopping or shutting anything down. Your interest changed into something else that was – Yeah, no, completely. Uh, more yep. profound. Yep. Yeah. No, so, my mind that, is still – going is still there but I, like I, I think I mentioned in one of the other episodes it was a moment where I had for, where I actually thought like I wanted my mind to just shut off because everything that was going through I thought but I don't want to listen to it and that's never happened before I've always been very interested in, in what's going on in my mind but at one point it was almost like I'm not interested at all and that was new for me and that was kind of exciting yeah, so it is. Uh, I feel the the key thing is this is very important. Don't try and shut your mind off. Just get a focus on something more, something else, and then you'll lose interest in the mind because, for example, heart and softness and focus on that. Be I mentioned be be tender with yourself like you would a child. That ultimately is far more enticing and uh, feels far greater than the mind aspect and. You'll start. You'll enjoy both, but you won't be swept, or, or swept aside, or swept away, or distracted so much by mind, which is, you know, 
and fit mind and fear and all those things that that where it tries to have you it's focused on something it's focusing on something more and i feel heart is far greater than mind and you know i've said before that the mind is a magnificent interpreter of heart but i feel heart is the source and this we're all this conversation about nurturing is getting in touch with the source within which is profound so switch nothing on off just focus on something that is more and more potent the impression yeah. of letting go of the mind is, is a sense of weakness and it's yeah. not actually to not fall into the fear for some for something potentially more that's a sign of strength yeah whereas my mind was telling me that because i used to call myself fiercely independent that's one of the ways i used to describe myself that was a strength in actual fact it was shutting me away away from my heart yeah yeah so you're more independent now mm. but you're softer and you feel yeah. more and you have more impact on those around you so you're still independent mm. yeah without putting words in mouth correct me if i'm wrong but you're more what i've seen you're more secure within yourself but you're far softer you're more feeling yeah. and yeah. more understanding and what you have to offer it's 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 not in anyone's face. It's not uh, for, you're not force feeding anyone. You just no. People but just, uh, people still respond to it though, which is really interesting. And and just seeing the effects of my work on myself and how this affecting family has been pretty awesome. Yeah. Well, I feel when you when one is caught in mind, then the teaching is can be a bit more stern, without even yeah. trying to be. Where if it's softer, it has the potency, and uh, people feel when they talk with someone that's soft, they have a choice going forward. Where if someone's caught more in mind, they're being talked into it in a sense. So they're letting go, and that is empowering for others. I encourage anyone listening to value yourself and nurture yourself. Do the things you enjoy, of course, but find time to nurture. Get in touch with how you're feeling. And if that's if that brings up stuff for you, then write down these things, write down how you're feeling, and then when you're in a, a more of a, a neutral or happier place, read back over what you've written, and start seeing through these feelings that don't serve you. They'll indicate where there's certain things for you to work through that indicate what they are, but uh, don't let it have you. Don't let it have it have its way. You're worth it. You have to. I feel, I truly feel you have to fight for freedom. And that starts, that uh, fight starts within yourself for freedom. And it's not reliant on anyone else but you. That is it. So you have to take the journey. You have to be prepared to fight the battle within. And nurturing is how you win the war. So anything to add, Linda? No, I think you summarized that quite well. Thank you. Thanks. So thank you for listening in and we'd look forward to the next one.